Hey, Vintage Divers, Alec Pierce, Alec Pierce Scuba, Vintage Scuba, and I'm here to tell you how much fun scuba diving was in the 60s. So much more fun than today. I mean, today, scuba diving isn't fun anymore. You have computers and BCDs and safe seconds, and I mean, there's very little risk involved. In the 60s, there was a lot of risk involved. It made it exciting. <laughs> I'm just kidding, of course, to some extent. Anyway, it was different diving in the 60s. But one of the things that was different about diving in the 60s is that scuba diving was a new sport. And so there were a lot of new things coming out from manufacturers, not always scuba manufacturers, sometimes from Mattel, yeah, game, ma toy manufacturers, because they, they sort of jumped on this scuba diving fad. It was called a fad back then. Scuba diving isn't a fad anymore. It's an extremely well-established sport worldwide. But back then, it was new. It was exciting. And everyone knew about scuba diving. Even if they weren't a scuba diver, they still liked scuba diving. There were television shows on, you know, on television. Of course, that's where television shows are. And, um, and <laughs> they were neat, too. Even for the non-divers, they enjoyed it. Jacques Cousteau had come out not too long, uh, not, uh, not about that time, with his uh, first uh, film, The Silent World. And he followed up with other films, The Silent World from the Red Sea, I believe, and so on. So there were a lot of shows on uh, television and movies. There were a lot of scuba divers in movies. If you watched some of my uh, other vintage episodes, you've seen some of the vintage posters that I have, and we have a lot more coming. I have a big, big collection of vintage posters, maybe 500. And uh, there are going to be some more of those coming up pretty soon, right? And they were exciting. So the point is that in the 60s and into the 70s, scuba diving was viewed as a fun thing. A little, di a little risky, you know, scuba divers were a bit like bikers, they were uh, living on the edge of life, <laughs> semi-seriously. Uh, but it was fun, it was exciting, it was colorful, and um, it's not that way today. If you go into a hobby shop today, or you go into Walmart, and you say to the clerk, listen, I'm going to get a game about scuba diving, you look at it, uh, what? There are no games about scuba diving. It's quite true, there aren't games about scuba diving, but boy, we had games back then. Here's a stack of games right here. And this is just half of what I have in games. In, in games, I have a lot of other toys. There's a separate category, toys and games. But these are just games. Now, there's other reasons for this, as you well know. It is, the, you know, the 21st century, and, uh, and we have computers and we have cellular phones and mobiles and iPads and all kinds of stuff. So very few people play with games anymore. But up until the uh, 80s, early 80s, uh, games were a big deal. Board games were a lot of fun. That was how the family amused themselves. Good, healthy, uh, uh, family-building activities, games. And so games were popular, and scuba diving games were popular. Can't find them today. I just want to show you a couple, real quickly. This is a short video, so pay attention. Jacques Cousteau, I mentioned Jacques Cousteau. Well, obviously, uh, he, he was well known. Uh, his uh, television and, and, and movie features were, were very popular, and uh, it made sense that there would be a, uh, a game. So here's a game. Uh, this game is from uh, a company, and, uh, and it's called The Undersea World of Jacques Cousteau Game. And so you, you would open this game up, and all the stuff is in there, the spinner and the markers and the board and everything else, and the whole family could sit down. You could take it to your scuba club. Yeah, at the scuba club. And after the meeting, after the meeting was over, all that dull stuff, then he could sit down, maybe the board members would sit down and uh, let's play a game of Jacques Cousteau and <laughs> something, you see. It may sound silly, but that was done quite a bit. So there you go, the undersea world of Jacques Cousteau, board game. Pretty neat. There's another one. This is also by a very, very well-known diving couple. This was a couple, uh, uh, Hans and Lottie Haas. Hans and Lottie Haas. And uh, here's, here's another game. They were quite famous. They were undersea explorers, uh, very, very well-known photographers, marine specialists, and, uh, and uh, they, uh, they also uh, had uh, uh, films, television programs, I believe, and very, very active, uh, both of these folks. And uh, here's a game, and this is called Haas Undersea Adventures. Yes, an adventure game. Hans and Lottie Haas. Some of you older divers may well remember Hans and Lottie Haas. Very, very well-known names in the 60s and 70s. Yeah, there you go. So there's another. Now here's a, here's a fun one here. I don't know how many of you remember the Aquanauts. You know what? Diane and I went to a show just the other day, as we do very frequently. We go to the shows quite a bit. 
movies at the movie theater. And uh, I was walking through the theater and to, to get to our theater where our show was. How's that look, Kevin? There's no glare on there. I can't see for sure. Um, but um, I'm walking through and, and they, have, uh, they have posters. Movie posters, like my movie posters. <laughs> yeah, except mine are 50 years old. But they have movie posters uh, advertising what's playing in that theater because, you know, theaters now have four, five, six, 10, 12, 15 theaters. There used to be a theater. I don't know if you remember that, but you used to go to the, the movie and you went to the movie. And you went to the girl in the glass cage. She was often outside, summer and winter. Yeah, and she'd be in a little glass county, walk up and give her your buck and a quarter. And uh, she'd give you a ticket, and you went into the theater, and you sat down in the chair and watched the movie. <laughs> I mean, no choice. But it's changed now a great deal. But anyway, I was walking through the theater, uh, through the lobby to our own theater, and I'm walking fast, and of course they have playing, and then they have coming soon. Yeah, some things don't change. Coming soon. And I'm looking at it, catch the Aquanauts. Yeah, there's a movie coming up called The Aquanauts. Well, here we go, The Aquanauts from the 60s. And, uh, and uh, this parade is... Uh, Nine to adult. Nine to adult. Of course, nine-year-olds today are adults. But anyway, there you go. A beautiful board game called The Aquanauts. And based on the old, very, very well-known television program, uh, The Aquanauts. Uh, and uh, they also had, a bit like Sea Hunt, they actually had Aquanauts comic books as well. That's right. There were a couple of comic books called The Aquanauts. Okay, what do we got here next? Let's see. Secrets of the Deep. I don't know this one very well. Uh, age of seven to adult, two to five players. And here, this, this looks exciting, boy, oh boy. And this one's a little newer. This is not from the 60s. This is probably from the 70s or the 80s. I don't see a date on here. But Secrets of the Deep, valuable treasure waiting to be raised, you see. And each player has a boat and a, and a, and a, a little diver icon, and you spin the thing, and you get to move around and see who gets to the treasure first. And you can run out of there, and you get eaten by a shark, all kinds of neat stuff. So a whole lot of fun. And there you go, Secrets of the Deep. That's a, a relatively new uh, game. I actually have one of the few games I haven't played. But there you go, Scooby Games. Where do you get a Scooby game today? Well, call me. But uh, you, you can't go and buy a Scooby game. As I say, you go to Walmart and have no idea what you... Now, this, is, this was a famous movie. A famous movie with a lot of big-name actors in a voyage to the bottom of the sea. And this is very common then. When a movie or television program was very popular, then after the after the program, different manufacturers would bring out promotional products. So, for instance, let me deal with Sea Hunt, my favorite. Sea Hunt was a very, very well-known television program, biggest uh, television program at that time and for many, many years afterwards. And so a lot of manufacturers brought out games. Yeah, they brought out games, and uh, comics all over the world, all over the world. Jigsaw puzzles, yeah, scuba gear, masks, snorkels, and fins, all kinds of books, all kinds of, all kinds of neat stuff. Another example, Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea was a very exciting and very popular movie at the time. And uh, there are some books, there's a book uh, uh, called Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea based on that TV program. And here's a game, uh, here's a board game based on that same TV program. And this is a little newer too, this is not the 60s, this is, I don't know when that movie was, Kevin, maybe you can check it out. I, I'm going to guess this is the mid-70s, and uh, so you can see the cars and so on in there. Exciting board game, a scuba diving board game. Yeah, okay, oh well, now here's an old one. This is not from the 60s. No, this is from the 50s. I'm not sure, 50s or 60s. And I think maybe we've seen this one before, game, uh, Kevin. But I really love this one because <laughs> skin diving action game. Okay, that's what it's called, skin diving action game. But I want you to get to zoom in a little bit on this, on this uh, 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 lid of this box, if you would, Kevin, because there's some neat stuff on here. And I, I want to point some of it out to, to the guys. First of all, we got a, a skin diver in there. And is that a good angle? And uh, let me put it up there so it's still. How's that? A uh, skin diver up there. And, and, um, and you can play by yourself or you can play with more players, whatever you want to do. And uh, you see the skin diver on there. He's got a spear and there's some fishes. Fishes? There are some fish running around in there. And you got me going fast here, Kevin. So I'm not using English. It's fish and he's about to spear the fish because this is to test your skill, right? Develop your coordination. Okay. <laughs> Maybe that was put in there for the parents and <laughs> maybe may help the parents who decide to buy this. But the thing I really like about this is right over here. The players actually spearfish. No, that's not it. Players actually spearfish. Here's what, look here. 
electronic remote control. That's got to catch your fancy. The kids say, oh, mom, this is great, it's electronic remote control. You can actually a little magnet on the end of a stick. Uh, I suppose a magnet could be, could be t termed electronic. And since it was on the end of a stick and the fish is over there and you move, and <laughs> it's pretty funny. The advertising, I love this cover. I think this cover is just fantastic. There's a game, a scuba diving game from the uh, 60s, skin diving action game. And of course, I couldn't possibly uh, uh, have, a, have a little uh, uh, episode here about uh, all the fun we used to have in the 60s and the 70s uh, with scuba games without uh, letting you see one more time a couple of my favorites. Sea Hunt Underwater Adventure Game. Yes, that's uh, Mike Nelson, Blood Bridges. Uh, Mike Nelson on the front, Mike Nelson, the uh, ex-Navy frogman who, who uh, always got the pretty girl and got the bad guy and, and helped kids and did all kinds of wonderful things. One of the most popular television programs uh, ever. Uh, this, this actually is a, an American game uh, made by Lowell, but there's another one, uh, here's another one, uh, Sea Hunt, uh, based on the exciting TV adventure series with Mike Nelson. This is from the UK, from, uh, from Great Britain. And uh, here's another one, another board game uh, to do with uh, that Sea Hunt, Mike Nelson uh, uh, television series that was so popular. There was a, just to give you an idea, I'm just going to throw this in. You know that I have a playlist about Sea Hunt, separate playlist entirely about Sea Hunt. So you, if you remember, uh, you guys over 50, remember Sea Hunt, or would like to learn about Sea Hunt. Uh, it's pretty exciting. Uh, go to that playlist and uh, see some of the things that I have in my, uh, my Sea Hunt uh, collection, uh, the biggest collection in the world, and uh, I'm very proud of it. But it's interesting, I was reading the other day that in New York, they did the phone survey, and 47% of the people who were watching television were tuned in to Sea Hunt. Think about that. Half of the people in the New York region were watching Sea Hunt at the same time. Yeah. Pretty neat. It was a popular show. And there's a game from it. Anyway, I don't want to talk about Sea Hunt. That's from my Sea Hunt playlist. I may do that again sometime on Sea Hunt. This is about games, fun and games in the old days, in the 60s. Now we had lots of them. Lots of games. If you were in the scuba diving, you had no lack of things for you to do, play. You could, you could be a scuba diver day and night. It was a lot of fun. Anyway, I thought you might enjoy that. Go through those pictures. Kevin's got a couple more to show you. And I hope that was fun. Fun and games in the 60s. <laughs> Take care. Talk to you soon. Alec Pierce, Vintage Scuba.